Hello and welcome to Quick Charge by Electrek. Keeping you in the fast track with daily Tesla and electric vehicle news. I'm Mikey G and it's Thursday, June 23rd. Tesla has launched a new virtual power plant in partnership with PG&E in California. It'll pay Powerwall owners to help stabilize the electric grid. Users will receive $2 for every additional kilowatt hour put back into the grid during a volatile electrical event, such as a brownout. Depending on the event and the number of power walls that the homeowner has, they could earn anywhere from $10 to $60 per event. Tesla said that it has about 50,000 power walls which are eligible for the program, and that would add up to a significant 500 megawatt hours of energy capacity that could be distributed during a time. Tesla has expanded the availability of its new Texas-built Model Y by adding units to the new inventory. As we've come to expect during these times, it also comes with a raised price for the new version. The new Texas-built Model Y standard range once started at $59,990, but now has jumped to $61,990. The new version also has fewer customization points such as less wheel and paint options. Interesting, these new versions are marked as available immediately in certain locations in the U.S. It's clear that Tesla is trying to ramp up deliveries at the end of the quarter. Toyota has issued a worldwide recall on its BZ4X electric compact SUV. The recall is for 2,700 units, which is believed to be the entirety of their program in customer hands. They write, quote, After low mileage use, all of the hub bolts on the wheel can loosen to the point where the wheel can detach from the vehicle. If a wheel detaches from the vehicle while driving, it could result in a loss of vehicle control, increasing the risk of a crash. Mercedes is pleased to announce the results of an electric project car aimed at improving range for upcoming EVs. Their ultra-efficient Vision EQXX electric car completed a 750-mile trip on a single charge, going from Germany to the UK. While we don't have all the details of the trip, Mercedes made it sound like the car was driving at a normal, real-world condition instead of hypermiling it by driving at low speeds. It took 14 hours and 30 minutes, and they drove an average speed of 52 miles an hour. If you are familiar with the Interstate I-15 in Utah, then you know that 52 miles an hour is essentially stopped. General Motors' autonomous driving division called Cruise has begun its paid driverless taxi service in San Francisco. They took their first fare just last night. While this is certainly the goal of Tesla and the broader market, it should be known that there are some limitations. Cruise's program covers about a third of San Francisco with only 30 cars and it runs between 10 p.m. and 6 a.m. While anyone can sign up, Cruise is sending out limited invites for users given the limitations of vehicle supply and a geofenced area at the moment. While the cost of this ride is currently comparable to ride-sharing apps, the company's CEO claims that the cost will eventually drop far below the cost of the apps as technology continues to develop. General Motors has announced that it is adding plug-in charge capability to its Ultium Charging 360 network of providers across North America. It'll be available on the Chevy Bolt, GMC Hummer, and the Cadillac Lyric EV. The feature of plug-in charge is incredibly simple. Plug in the car, and it starts to charge without apps, buttons, touchscreens, and so on, the same way that you would charge a phone at home. And the Ultium 360 is a network of charger providers who have partnered with General Motors to give coverage to GM customers. Starting today, EVgo will be the first of the Ultium Charge 360 family to offer the plug-in charge capability to the customers. There's a full list of partner networks on our site, which include Blink and ChargePoint. Taking a look at the community comments found on YouTube, Doug Grinbergs says, quote, Sure, Musk, Tesla are unconventional, if not rogues, bad boys, but dumping PR departments still seems counterproductive and unprofessional. Companies should be managing image, have media contacts with professional voice. And also, another commenter, Martin Woods, says, quote, Can't see Tesla doing any advertising anytime soon, not while they have insane demand and long wait times. And now, from where I sit at Electrek, I think that Musk's goal of improving the message portrayed by the media companies by essentially becoming their customer is really not addressing the cause. I think that the mainstream media portrays Tesla in such a polarizing light simply because Tesla is unprecedented in history and it gets ratings. 
The underdog viewers see themselves in the success of Tesla, and the naysayers want to validate their skepticism and root for the Tesla downfall. Also, there is a silly discussion on the political side, and that draws a lot of attention too. I think that if Tesla started paying for ads on mainstream media, the networks would still just run sensational stories anyway because that's their product to sell. You may have heard it said before, but the saying goes, you can't pay a hungry jackal. Thanks for watching Quick Charge by Electrek. I'm Mikey G, and I hope you have a great day.